Um, well, I'm on the computer way too much for my own good. Dr. Sahar Kamis is a communication professor at the University of Maryland and recently wrote a book called Islam.com. Islam.com actually talks about the, uh, the liberations and discussions on three of the most popular uh, mainstream Islamic websites, Islam Way, Islam Online, and Amr Khalid. We've selected these three websites in order to see how Muslims uh, do discuss issues related to uh, Islam, understanding of their own religion and their, their own selves. We had two extremes. There was the extreme of unanimous collectivism in an emotional way, or there was the other extreme of extreme divergence and uh, going over even to the direction of conflict, uh, having conflicting attitudes that sometimes, unfortunately, did not really present themselves in the best possible way. And we felt that the middle ground of negotiation and deliberation and rational dialogue is missing. The problem, I think, with message boards is that um, things get lost in translation. So when you have like 54 comments and you have like, you know, 20 people talking at the same time, it, you know, you're, what are you trying to get out of it? Are you trying to learn? Are you trying to see the two different sides of it? And then people go off on tangents. And I think it's more for people to just have an outlet of their opinion. I said my opinion. There. Go read it. And in every part of the world, young people, especially youth, are very technologically savvy, they are very technically savvy, they're clever with new media, they spend many, many hours on Facebook, on blogging, on tweeting, all of these activities. And this is not a phenomenon that is now alien to the uh, Muslim world, a very influential new avenue in terms of how they redefine themselves as Muslims and how they redefine others, whether they are other Muslims or non-Muslims. Amina is a junior at the University of Maryland and an active member of the Muslim Student Association. I grew up um, like in a very like close-knit Islamic community and I went to a Muslim school and so in that instance yeah like I grew up surrounded by like a Muslim culture and by like um, Islamic um, uh, like beliefs. So. What is great especially about Facebook is the ability to I guess interact with the people that are not in your community. It's that, you know, that maybe you'd see them once a year or something at an event and that's what I like about, you know, these social networks is that they it brings you together when you're not physically together. Uh, made it better by far. I mean, I know on my cell phone I have a full copy of the Quran. I got a full copy of this program called I Pray, where it's like you set your iPhone down, it tells you which direction to pray in. Um, there's so many different things on phones and using the internet, uh, using the internet to uh, that actually promote religious ability. The whole point of being in a religious community is where, is that you meet together to practice the rituals. So I would say we only use technology to our advantage, and it doesn't really hinder our practice. I definitely think technology is a big, um, a big tool to spread the word in the Muslim community. Yes, it's helpful that you, you know, automatically with that interpersonal relationship that I was talking about, where you can just automatically connect with somebody, be able to text them and text you right back, and it's like they're there with you. But the problem is that, especially when you put it in a religious context, I think it's it has, it's detrimental in a way because like we have certain um, religious um, sayings, you know, we have religious greetings, we have um, religious prayers and things, and so people actually say that um, over text message or something or in an email, and they kind of like abbreviate it, and it doesn't it t it takes out the context and it takes out the true meaning. Line. There is no turning back. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the trend has started, right? And it will continue to go and it will continue to grow, right? with all its good and bad, we have to kind of make the most out of it. We have to be smart enough to really kind of reap the fruits of this new phase of, uh, you know, um, technological revolution, as we call it. Discussion boards, we have seen evidence of, you know, Pakistanis and Iranians and people from Philippines and from Saudi Arabia and from different parts of the world, they are you know, um, the, yeah, engaging in uh, back and forth communication among themselves in a way that would not have been possible had it not been for these new, um, you know, channels and media of communication. So definitely, there is a lot of transnationalism. I 
I did travel to um, Syria and Lebanon, and it was a great experience. So we met people that you know we'd never met before, and um, it was I probably will never see them again if I never go back. And but the one thing that's good I think is that you know we did kind of like they have cell phones over there, they have email over there. It's like it's not like a third world country, you know, where they have huts and things. It's like you know they live in like you know awesome places and. Um, when I did talk to them, it was like, well, I know I might never see you again, but I can still communicate with you. We can a variety of prayers, like, it switches back and forth in different locations each week. So the technology is helpful because we can get the information out fast and more efficient, and it's not like going by word of mouth or missing people. So like, if you know you're connected to them, through some sort of um, technological thing, whether it's like Twitter or Facebook or whatever, then you're going to get the information. I think that it's really strengthened relations because I know a lot of friends who use, for example, Skype. Okay, They yeah. Skype all the time with their families and friends and they have, you know, even the microphone, the camera. Instant messaging, webcam, email, those are the ways that you can connect with your family and it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. It's free, mm -hmm. you know, because the internet actually helped us reconnect with it. That's something that we value very much. If somebody random, you know, like Joe Smith, he adds you on Facebook or something, or he adds you on MySpace, um, technically, typically, I wouldn't accept that person because, like, I don't know who Joe Smith is, you know, who is this person? We have no friends in common. But, you know, it's... I guess if, you know, like, another, like, Muslim girl or something would, like, add me on Facebook and I see that we do have friends in common, I would typically would add her because I feel more comfortable because we have that connection of, like, an Islamic culture. So it's kind of, like, intangible, but in a way, it, it sort of overrides the fact that it's awkward and we don't know each other. We kind of just go, hi, how are you? And, like, you, you know, you've known each other for 10 years and we really don't. But. I also use Facebook to connect with other Muslim college students. Since I graduated from a Muslim high school, I wanted to continue that connection. And I was able to practice my religion in a college environment without feeling pressured by... I was, I was the girl who said I would never have Facebook. Facebook is just, you know, another internet like MySpace and stuff. People just want to be nosy and, and you know, look at pictures and be all up in your business. But then I finally did get Facebook last year. I said, okay, you know what, I'll just go ahead and create a page and then reconnect with my old friends that I have not seen in over 15, 20 years. And um, and so, yeah, so it, I did get it last year around this time. So it's only been a year, I'm still new. Just being on College Park as a on-campus student, I'm sort of like in a bubble. And sometimes I don't really know like what's happening, like just in like the DC metro area or whatever. And when I'm friends with other people and they invite me to events, I can sort of see what's going on. And through that, I learn about other events that are happening that may or may not. kind of public so you can't really say exactly what you want to say so and then you know you say like hi how are you and it literally it's it's less personal um and it could be your best friend and it's still less personal you know so I mean I've actually seen people I mean it kind of it's kind of funny to me because I, I see people all the time saying you know I love you you're my best friend you know like uh, and it's like wow you know you're just like spreading your love <laughs> everywhere but honestly I would say texting is the bad thing about texting is that it's it's less communication. You're not really talking to the person. You're just reading something. So it's somewhat, it is like, there is like, the texting does have its disadvantages because such as like birthdays, you know, it's more meaningful when you hear someone's voice and say, happy birthday, you know, or like happy birthday, at least instead of reading a text, like, wow, they can spend two minutes texting me, but they couldn't answer the phone and pick up the phone and dial my number and like, okay, happy birthday, at least. So there's, there are some disadvantages with texting. educators, uh, parents, uh, you know, religious um, authorities or scholars, really kind of not waiting, not waiting to be invited into the blogs or into the tweets or into the Facebook, but to be there, mm -hmm. to be there and, and join, you know, the conversation with these young people. So I 
you know when people approach things, especially parents and like the older generation where they don't, didn't grow up with it, they don't know exactly, they're apprehensive about it. So they're like, you know, they look over your shoulder, who are you talking to, <laughs> who is that, What's, why is that blinking, you know, it's like a little bit creepy because they're like, what are you doing? You're like, nothing, you know, but... Um, if you're just, I guess if you're just open with them and you actually like go through the process with them and you show them, you know, this is how you leave a comment, this is how you look at pictures and they're like, oh, that's cool. Instead of having a bitter, lamenting or, you know, disappointed attitude, like, you know, this, this tide is really coming to us, we don't know what to do to stop it, mm -hmm. I'm saying this tide is coming to us, how can we best ride on it? How can we best make the best out of it and really use it in the best effective way for these kids and for ourselves as well?